de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome to the Global Latin Factor Podcast, the Global Latin Factor Podcast. We have another edition today. Thank you very much for checking out the podcast. I have the lo lovely Mia with me. Hola. Hola, what's up? <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing good. That's great to hear. You ready for your Spanish word of the day? Let's go. Let's do this. All right. We're going to do this. If you don't know, we have a segment. So real quick, touchback. Mia is a third generation. I keep saying second or third, but you're third generation Mexicana. Mm -hmm. And her parents, for whatever reason, didn't really push the Spanish on her. She is third generation. However, she does got uh, wants to learn Spanish. And we're going to start little by little teaching her a word a day. Last time was cerveza, which is beer all right <laughs> and this week it's going to be abuela 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 and what do you think that means <laughs> well i know it means grandma <laughs> absolutely means grandma and uh yeah abuela you can say like a lot of uh, us mexicanos or latinos used to like add a like abuelita like everything makes small because it sounds nicer <laughs> cuter well, like yeah old grandmas are just like short yeah. and like you know like grandma coco from like yeah, exactly. <laughs> the movie so you go speaking of coco recuerda <laughs> me <laughs> that's right abuela abuelita so remember that that's your word so Abuela. whatever unfortunately both of my grandmas are no longer here but you know i used to enjoy their company they taught me a lot and sometimes disciplined me because you know that's what we're about, Latinos. Sometimes, I mean, I understand people discipline their kids different ways, but for with us... With the chancla. <laughs> with the chancla. Grandma, we broke, we broke my one of my cousin's arm one time, playing on an avocado tree. We swung from it, and I guess she didn't get a, a grip. Boom, she fell, broke her hand, and the grandma chased us. Grandma could move, and she was older, probably in her 70s. Man, that chancla, I swear it was a good... Man, how far... It was far. She chunked it. And I barely missed it. It hit my like, the whole football field. Almost, and it hit the back of my foot. I went like this, and I hit. And it was getting dark, and she got scared because we were we didn't wouldn't come out because mm -hmm. she was mad. We broke my cousin's hand. So eventually, we all came around, and she didn't hit us no more. <laughs> we took out running. It was hilarious. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about briefly about the responsibility of giving advice before we get to our global Latin factor that we're going to talk about today. So, what do you think it means about responsibility of giving advice? What do you think that means, Mia? Uh, so, you're responsible for the advice that you give to the person, but the person chooses to take the, vi the advice or not. And you have to be smart about what kind of advice you give them because right. if it's not good advice, then that person might take it and, like, mix it up in their head and think about something else right. and then go do something bad or i don't know like they could they could do something really bad and then you'll start feeling guilty and yeah absolutely so i did want to touch on it be because it, it is a responsibility to give advice if so i used to be the way that i was before is i proactively used to give advice for whatever reason they grew on me to go around and just telling people certain things i don't know i just kind of I know that I tell you about energy, I really know much about it or whatever, but something drew me to that person, whether it was a colleague at work, and I start talking to him, and I tell him a, a couple of things, because I just felt, I swear I had people in tears before of certain things that I said, because, I don't know, it just grew on me to say, but after a while, I just started realizing that it does come with responsibility, because after that, I would seek to give advice to those people, because I felt like I knew everything, and I was... All this and that, <laughs> not knowing that I didn't know much of nothing, and I realized that I was doing that, and I caught myself. So now, I don't do that. Now I just wait for people to come to me, and if you know, eventually, if you leak, if you're seeking for something, eventually, you're gonna find it. People sometimes they the ones to come out my direction, and for whatever reason they ask for something, I'd be more than happy to let them know that this is what I see on my my opinion mm -hmm. of what I would do if I was in your position is not me and then again remember what I told you about knowledge is power so you can tell them what you feel they know it's up to them to take but at the same time you know you just give them the best response possible uh, and the best advice possible not to uh, and also just to, for them to realize that it is it is uh, it does come with responsibility because you don't want them to get hurt you don't want them to have nobody hurt you know things like that mm -hmm. so I think it's very 
it's very uh, important to realize that it is responsibility for well, sometimes we feel like we know everything and we're so important and mighty but we're just like this little bitty thing tiny ants you know, tiny not even an ant in the whole galaxy there there is we just like so petite, so petite, so little bitty, <laughs> chiquititos. So you know, just just realize, you know, if they do come, and if you do it from your heart, I think giving advice from your heart, and again, just letting the person know, this is what I see, and this is what I feel, because a lot of the times, you know, what I realize that people that are single <laughs> are great at giving advice. You know why? Why? Okay, because they don't have feelings involved. And even everything that's going on for somebody that's in a relationship, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you're in love, this and that. And all of a sudden, all those things cloud you. You're just blinded by love. Like absolutely blinded by it. And it's so true because a lot of the people just, they're so in it and they're just not seeing everything clear. And then somebody from the outside looking from it, like, hey, this is what I see, but hey, do, do you. But I'm just seeing it from my side that this is what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. logically, not blinded by love or mm -hmm. anything you know what i mean yeah because it is true and i feel that those people the people are single are the best people to get advice for relationship because they don't have feelings invested in there and that's why we're good at this that's what i'm saying <laughs> all right we're gonna go ahead and move on to our latino global latin factor so again the global latin factor we talk about everything in between why well, i keep saying in between everything that is related to latino culture we talking about people, food, TV, even series, music, whatever. We talk about it, right? Yep. And we touch touch up on different people. And today we have another, another great Latina that's made a great contribution, mostly here in the United States. However, she is still, uh, you know, a very influential around the world, and uh, just an activist. Period. And if you have, if you're if you're an activist, if you're just looking after humanity, then I feel like you're a contributor to to the world. Period. So we're talking about who are we talking about? Judy. How do you say her last name? Francisca Baca. Francisca. That's her middle name. So Judith Francisca. Judah Francisca Baca. Baca. AKA Miss Judy Baca was born in September 20th, in 1946, and she is Chicana. She's a Mexican American. She's an activist, and she graduated from the University of California. She's also a professor at the University of California. She's in uh, Chicano studies in school, social science, profession, world art, culture. Do you know what she's famous for? She is mm -hmm. famous mm -hmm. for a mural. Uh-huh. Where? Uh in Mexico. <laughs> no. I don't know. It was Mexico before you're not. But it's, a, it's a mirror like of her grandma or it's like it's called Apu, uh, that word. I can't say it. Pronounce. Abuelita? And well, that's that, the word I can't pronounce abuelita, correctly. Abuelita? Abu abuelita. Abu? 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 Eh? Eh? Lita. Lita. Yeah. Abuelita. Well, well, she, she has paintings of her, her grandma but whenever she, what she was saying is that a lot of the times whenever she was painting pictures like they didn't have any meaning like they just, she just paint even though it was her grandma mm -hmm. and it had to have a meaning she just felt empty as far as the pictures it's just she felt like they didn't have no story no depth on in them and she's trying to, to start changing her ways she is famous for one of this it's called the great wall of los angeles do you know what that is isn't it a mural uh... it's a big mural it's a huge mural. There's in Los Angeles. It covers a huge wall, and it goes forever in a day. And they talk about everything. We're talking about the beginning of, like, you know, the Americas, the natives being here, to different, the, the conquerors, and it's all kinds of stuff. Like, the whole mural is, and, and she she's the one that mainly is over it. However, she does get volunteers to help out and uh, help with the mural. And uh, it's called the Great Wall of Los Angeles. But you are not wrong, though. Mexico, Los Angeles was Mexico at one time. <laughs> you know, it is true. I was talking to my dad about that. I'm telling him, man, I think Santana had a had a deal with the, with the Americans. So supposedly the story goes right that mm -hmm. Mexico allowed some of the U.S. people that were coming in to, you know, take over Texas. Not take over, but like have them be in Texas, mm -hmm. and just because it was. There was nobody there, so it's just okay. Come on over, you can. I can chill. And then they started bringing slaves. And Mexico's like, no, 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 no. We, we don't like that. Bye. And it's like, well, no, we're not leaving. 
and then all of a sudden they got into it the uh, Texas uh, war Mexico war and then before you know it Santa Alamo and all that yeah, and then San Antonio before you know it, uh, Santana get, gets defeated a huge army by a small group of, of uh, Texans but I don't know <laughs> it just don't sound right there were way too many of them and I, I just feel like there's something there Santana's family was probably well off after that if you're a Santana and your relatives you know you're probably doing well off in your life. That's just do, a conspiracy. Do you think though. people actually know that they're, like, related to famous people like that? Like, But what did, what did, okay, so how? How did they find out? That's what I'm saying. Like, do you think they do, what are those, those tests or, like, the ancestry? Mm -hmm. And then they find out. And then do you think they get, like, special treatment or anything? Or I don't think so. I mean, eventually, let's say if there is money involved, maybe you'll probably have to go through some kind of legal process mm -hmm. to get something out of it but I don't know I, Santa, I don't know what Santana's family's relatives are to this day I don't know if they have any power or anything but I mean you you still have to have some money <laughs> to, to do a lawsuit all right moving on so again I, the, the Great Wall of Los Angeles some of these individuals that we talk about it's just it's just like like a, it's like an iceberg, right? We just talk about just the tip of all the things that they've done in their life, accomplished. And again, this is one of the magnificent things that you can see in Los Angeles. It's a landmark picture, and again, it's uh, historical because it's never been done before. And it began the the process itself began in 1974, and it completed over. Five, it was completed over five summers. The Great Wall employed over 400 youth and their families from diverse so, uh, social economy and, and background. So pretty much different people, volunteers along, but all these people were, came over and helped out make this amazing um, mural. Now, do, do you, are you familiar at all with the uh, Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence? Do you know what that is? No. Okay, so supposedly this is like, they call it the golden ratio, which is <laughs> a, any number. So, for example, it starts off like this, a number of sequence, right? Mm -hmm. It starts from 0, 1, and then 1, you add 1, so it becomes 1 again. And then from that 1, you add another 1, so it becomes 2. And from the 2, you add the previous number, so it becomes 5. And from that five, you add the previous number, it becomes what? eight. You see it? Okay, hold on. okay. so it's one, uh -huh. and then you add a one. Yeah. And so one becomes and one two. becomes two. And then, and then one plus two one, is three, three. Uh -huh. and two plus three is five. five. And then so and on and so forth. Three plus till five. For infinity. For infinity? It goes forever. So anyways, if you put it in, in a square sequence, it, it, it gets this... Uh, it's a spiral, right? Mm -hmm. And you can find it anywhere in, in the universe. You can find it in people's faces. You can find it in flowers. You can find it in Wait, galaxy. you said in people's faces? Yeah, like symmetrically. Supposedly, it's like the reason why it's famous is because people's eyes are more likely to look at that. Like if people are proportionally according to the ratio, the golden ratio, mm -hmm. that their features are like more symmetrical and we're like more likely to look at that person. Huh. I don't know if it's true or not. I did, but I did uh, heard this, uh, Carlos, this, uh, I think it was a Harvard professor. He broke down all the myths about it, and a lot of the things is just coincidence. But they use they do use the golden ratio as far as in, in the actual mural. They did use the proportions to keep the, uh, the like same. Like even. Yeah, the same. Yeah, even. <laughs> and uh, the know, Apple logo is compromised of, like, several of those. Which one? The Apple logo. Do they? It's a bunch of Fibonacci sequences. Really? Apple? For real? Hmm. I mean, again, not every single person has used it in history. Even, like, who? Uh, da Vinci. He knew about it. But a lot of the work he did and his paints and everything, he didn't... You know, he can even structure songs according to the Fibonacci sequence. And then people have done it before. And Pi. You know pie? Yeah. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> you can, you can. Not the pie you eat. <laughs> no, no, the other one. But, uh, pie. Mathematical 3.14. 3.14, yeah. So people have done and, and sequenced songs according to pie. And you can do the same thing for Fibonacci sequence as far as the numbers. Like you can structure it to, uh, again, I'm just going <laughs> off. I'm confusing you. My bad. Just look into it. Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio. 
get in there on the rabbit hole and go through it. But they do do it. It's, it's crazy that they do use it in the mural. And that was interesting to me. So Baca has stood for art and service, for equality for all people, and integrated of ethics with creative impression, meaning that she fought not only for Latinos, Chicanos, but everybody in between. The mural was built in Los Angeles by every single type of person. There's for every walk of life that were welcome to contribute to this thing. And I think it's a beautiful thing where you can get people together and contribute. Because I remember, I said before, when we were coming in to be what we are today. So, you know, everybody's want to be competitive, this and that. But mm -hmm. do you think back in the days when we were living in caves or whatever the case, do you think that we were trying to compete against each other? Hmm. Like you said, cavemen people, right? If we're yeah. living in caves. I mean, I feel like we're fighting to the finish, like all for one, right? So, we, back in the, the days, we were so, so there was not enough of us that we had to work together mm -hmm. in order for us to keep striving as humanity. So, we weren't worried about competing with each other. We were worrying about taking down a big gain or something so we can stay alive, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of the times we forget about that, that when we, be, we began our history of humans, we started by working with each other and growing and exploring. After a while, it became this competitive thing and blah, 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 which is cool, I guess. But after a while, it just, I don't think that's the wave. I think the wave is to, to help each other out and work together. Like when we did the Despacito, you're talking about uh, a Puerto Rican, uh, Colombian, and Peruvian, three nationality latinos made this amazing song that it's like the biggest thing that ever happened mm -hmm. you know what happens that's what happens when we cooperate as far as latinos and this is only one one example because there's been so many other examples of latinos coming together and just doing beautiful things like where you work where you work at do you have different type of of uh culture or just mostly latinas or no there's a whole different type of culture there where i work uh and that's what i like about it honestly because mm -hmm. It's different than the other location in Dallas right. because there it is just one type of, it is mostly Latinas there, you know? Mostly and, Mexicanas, right? Yes. And at the location that I work at, there is a wide variety because different types of people do come in there mm -hmm. because they want it to be more of, like, not just focus on one race, you right, know? Right. They want to introduce it to everybody and, like, yeah, show what we got. <laughs> yeah, I like that concept too. Again, it just looks a whole lot better when you can see different people. And I, I recommend for everybody, because I know you travel before here in the States, but when you see other people, the way they live, if there's any advice that I can give anybody, just travel just one time. Go see how somebody else lives. Go see how they do things. And you'll be like, it opens your eyes a different way. I can't even describe the way it is. There's not like a blindfold or anything, but all of a sudden you start relating to other people like, oh, wow, <laughs> they do things like this, you know? Nothing yeah. to do with the way that I'm accustomed to doing, you know? And that's pretty cool. Any final thoughts on Miss Judy Baca? Where is this mural, like, mural located? I didn't like get the said? address. Can you uh, help me out? Where will be the address for the Great Wall of Los Angeles? I know it's in Los Angeles. Because the next time I go to California, maybe I'll check it out. <laughs> you'll be able to see it. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it, it, you'll be able to. You can't miss it. So this is in North Hollywood. It's in Ooh. North Hollywood. So if you're ever in North Hollywood and you want to see a great piece of art, go stop by, take a picture, snap, and tag us at the Global Latin Factor. We appreciate if you do that. <laughs> All right. This is the Global Latin Factor. Again, we are just like you we are here to participate we are the spice in this global melting pot that it is the world until the next episode this is the global latin factor i'm crispin valentina i have mia what's up bye guys Peace.